Hi, my name is Anita Foster. I'm the Library Media Specialist at Autry Middle School in Kennesaw, Georgia. Hi, I'm Ingrid Hansen. I'm the Library Media Specialist at Lindley Sixth Grade Academy in Mapleton, Georgia. Hey everyone, I'm Lori Quintana and I am the Library Media Specialist at Griffin Middle School in Smyrna, Georgia. Welcome to Overdue, Conversations in the Library. College week! <laughs> You know right. what? There wasn't a whole lot of football going on. I mean, at least I couldn't keep up with when it was and when it wasn't. But mm -hmm. there's my team right there. A lot of people don't know I'm actually from Michigan. I've been in Georgia. Yes, you are. Yes. And I've only been in Georgia for six years. Um, but it's been a, a great time here so far. But I am from. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just had to have the big house behind me and um, bring a little bit of my Michigan out. <laughs> What's your call? I, I am from, I got to hear which side I'm on. I am actually from Florida, but I've been here for 15 oh, that's years. Right. That's so, right. And I'm a gator till I die. <laughs> so uh, when <laughs> Lori had her Michigan up, I had to, you know, I had to represent Florida. No, I did not go to college there. Okay. Well, neither did I, I just, get the opportunity to, but one of these days, maybe it'll happen. I'll do something and get that Michigan name on my college resume. But Ingrid is also from. <laughs> I am from Michigan as well. Woohoo! Um, and I'm not really a football fan. Like I know some of you, it's like you're really football fans. I am not one of them. But if I did, it would have like a Michigan State behind. <laughs> <gasps> oh! <laughs> oh! I did not see that coming at all. <laughs> <laughs> I went to state. So Oh, so okay. So I didn't do my I didn't I did my undergrad at Eastern, but um I did a master's at Michigan State. So wow, see, we're still learning things about each other. <laughs> but that's awesome because guess what? When we have some real football games again, that we we will have to have a state in a Michigan party. I'll there like, you go. That the one great game that you, you have to watch one game. <laughs> Okay. So at one time, Michigan was the team in Michigan and in mm -hmm. Michigan, and they went to Rose Bowl a lot and stuff like that. So, yeah. but I'm staying on the bandwagon. I'm hoping they make a comeback one day. So anyway, but I'm, I'm just as happy if they beat Ohio state. Okay. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Beat Ohio state every time. <laughs> Whether it's Michigan State or Michigan. Yep, it doesn't matter as long as we beat Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it for for the Gators, Anita? Who do you guys have to be? Florida Gators. Oh, yeah, Georgia. Well, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We have to beat Georgia and we have to beat Florida State. Now, this year we did not play Florida State because of COVID restrictions. We were only allowed to play teams in the SEC. Mm -hmm. But normally the Saturday after Thanksgiving is our state, um, our state one. Yeah, my son just heard me talk about how we have to beat Georgia. He's upstairs <laughs> and he went, and we beat Georgia. Because <laughs> we did beat them this year. Uh, that's awesome. Well, the state. So, um, I've learned there state. are a couple of games I do not bet on. There's a couple of games I don't bet on, and one of them is the Georgia game, and one of them is the Florida State game. Because anytime I bet on a football game, like I'll buy you lunch if if you beat us. Type I was going to say it's books. Um, it's then books. Gators will. <laughs> Gators well, will lose. So I tend not to bet on football. I don't bet on anything really. Well, Ingrid, the state Michigan. Who, who does um, Michigan, Michigan game? They play usually on my birthday or within a couple of days of my birthday. So it can be Aww. a party and a football party. So anyway. So anyway, guys, what are we talking about today for our audience? Our one word for the year. <laughs> it's out there everywhere, right? Like you can't open anything up without this is my one, about my one, one word so. of the year. Are you ready? It's therapy. I'm just kidding. It's not, but <laughs> <laughs> it, it may need to be by the end of the year. Are you last year? My, <laughs> oh my gosh. Last year my word was intentional and it changed halfway through the year to survive. <laughs> so um I can see that for all of us. I do, I do have a new word for this year and no, it's not therapy. 
I forgot what my one word was. <laughs> I don't remember it. I really don't. I thought I, I came across it uh, last week sometime doing something and I was like, oh, that's what it was, but I forgot it again. So you can see how committed I was. I would say that you texted it to us, but there's probably 500, 500. texts in yes. between that text. Yeah, and I'm not going to scroll through. I was going to. I'm oh. like, yeah, no. <laughs> well, nah, it's really not that important anyway because obviously I didn't follow through on it or if I did I don't know if I did so um but 2021 is here and we all have new words and so let's talk about our one words and we're gonna let Anita go first because let me tell you she was prepared and um I want to hear what, what it is and what it's all about I even have notes Oh, I thought you were going to, so I thought what you picked I up did, a banana at first. I'm like, what is a banana? <laughs> oh, no, good. we're just going to have a few no. snacks. It's fine. <laughs> um, so what those, I did first was I cheated. backgrounds. Uh -huh. <laughs> Nothing. New. I cheated. I went to <laughs> one of the websites because there's many. I went to one of the websites that has one word for the year goals. And I went through their list and I pulled out some that I liked. And then I started writing what that one word would mean to me and what it would look like. So um, like one of them that I just shared with the ladies a few minutes ago. Hold on, hold on. Cause I'll you have to do like a drum roll when you're going to say the real word. So which. Okay. I'll, I'll do a drum. Okay. okay. Um, like open was one of my words mm -hmm. and it was be open to the moment be open to the possibilities, be open to the experience, be open to the opportunity. And I found that there was this theme, because I have like 10 words, there was this theme going through the words that I was like, hmm. So my new word is, you got a general one? Is create. But it's not it's how nice. you think. Yes. I am very creative. I love to do crafts. I love to do displays. I love to do bulletin boards. I love to create, but that's not what I'm talking about here. When I say create for this, I want to create moments. Mm -hmm. I want to create ideas. I want to create relationships. I want to create time for me. Mm -hmm. I want to create experiences. I want to create smiles. I want to create content and podcasts, ladies. <laughs> and I want to create possibilities. I love so my word to create. I love that. I love you too. That's, that's, that's a lot fabulous. of that's a lot of creating that it is a lot. <laughs> but it's a lot of creating that is going to bring inner positivity and peace for you. Wow. Yes. So that mm -hmm. is like so awesome. So so awesome. Mm -hmm. I would have never guessed that from you. <laughs> for your work my, that's awesome my next word you got us. Grace. i've been saying we need to give grace a lot lately so mm -hmm. grace mm -hmm. is a good word too for this year mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely but, but my word is create okay so go through the list really quickly create and just go down those list of things create moments moments create ideas ideas relationships relationships Time for me. Time for me. I love that one. Um, experiences. Smiles. I love content, that one too. content and podcasts and possibilities. Okay. My favorite out of all of those is time for me and uh, moments and smiles and podcasts. Oh, that's my favorite. Yep. You're, you're right. We, we, we've kind of like been thrown off track a little bit with our podcast, um, for a few months. Um, and so, um, I think we've missed each other a little bit <laughs> and so we've got to get back to that. So, but, um, definitely. So the moments, the moments are important in our podcast yeah. those for us as well. And so they kind of go, like you said, hand in hand and, um, I think it's the moments that keep us going. Um, I agree. The positive, the positive mm -hmm. ones and even the negative ones. Um, and so um, I don't want that many negative ones. I'm just saying, but it, all of the moments keep us going and help us to reflect and um, assess and do what we have to do to be able to keep going forward. And so I really like that. 
time for me is like, it, that is so important for everybody right now, because I think when we got started with COVID, we got so busy with trying to help so many people and service so many people that all of our time and then some was taken up to um, create that new normal that we were all looking for. And so um, I've been doing the same thing, Anita. The time for me um, is um, leaving work on time, something I've never did before. I wouldn't leave work till seven, eight o'clock at night. And I'm like, I 4.30, 4.45, I leave and I'm home on time. Um, so that's something that I've been doing. Uh, and the, then also creates time with your family. Yes, yes, exactly. And my dogs, <laughs> which are family. So, um, but, uh, and so also time for me, you're like, you were talking about creating, loving to create things like literally creating things like the, the crafts and everything like that. But, um, the time for me too, is, um, I don't get a lot of time to read. Um, and, and a lot of librarians say this, that they don't actually have time to read because they're so busy doing so many other things, but I'm actually making time for me to do that now. And I, which I did not do before and really getting lost in a book because a lot of times people, and I see this a lot on social media that it's, it's like, especially at the end of this, you know, every year too, they talk about how many books they read in the year. And I feel like, I don't think that should be the focus is how many you read, but like that you get some really good content and some really good books and, and stories that really touch you um, and that move you and make you cry. Cause I can cry <laughs> during a book too. I'm sure like both of you have done that as well. Um, and find out how, what, how, what that story means to me and um, how I can use that story in my own life. Um, for me personally, for my family, for my students, um, for my friends and things like that to make me a better person. Um, in writing. And so um, that's what I miss. Yes. I, I used to write all the time and I would write stories and I would publish them online. Yes. I remember now we haven't read I've those yet. had time to write and I really want to get back into writing, even if it's just short stories. Well, I've been really inspired by that because, especially from authors, especially when I hear their stories, like I've listened, I've done a lot of virtual conferences this year with a lot of authors that are at the conferences and listening to their stories on how they got started and what happened in their life to get them writing. And that has so inspired me. And I told my pair the other day, I'm like, I'm a, I'm a school librarian. I read, I love, you know, the authors that bring us the stories and the books and stuff like that. So why not be a writer myself? And she's like, oh, do you have an idea to um, what to write about? I was like, no, <laughs> but that doesn't matter. Um, right the second, it's just that I start writing and then I get words on the paper and stuff like that. You know, what's funny is when I start writing, the characters start talking in my head. <laughs> Anita. They have their own voice and I, I start to, you know, listen to them. Is and Fabio in there? I know we talked about this before. His voice. I'm <laughs> more of a... Not Ingrid, you have to hone in on that one. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just observing. I'm just listening quietly. I'm more of a Jamie from Outlander. That's why one of my short stories was... A yes. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Right. So whose word it's is like next? Well, I was going to tell you smiles too. Smiles, I like it from your list as well, um, because I can tell you that somebody can be having like a not so good day and the mo anybody can really smile at you. They just smile and it doesn't have to be anybody you know, but it changes everything. It like, it stops you for a minute and then it just changes your mood and, you know, and then you, it's, for me, it's an automatic response to smile back, which automatically changes things for you as well. So, which really stinks with all the masks because you can too. I know. And I'm starting to like, I know people are going to be like, what? But like, when you look at people now and you have to look at their eyes to see if their eyes are smiling now. And so I, I actually look to see whose eyes look like they're actually smiling when they're smiling. Cause some people you can't tell if they're smiling, even when they're smiling. I'm one yeah, of the like, people with a mask. I'll, 
I'll smile at people that I don't know in the grocery store or whatever. And they look at me like I'm crazy. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm just smiling under my mask at you. <laughs> but I, okay, we have to do this at work tomorrow. We have to do some kind of, uh, we have to do a team's call or something with our masks on and observe who has the smiling eyes. <laughs> I'm just curious. It's like a thing. Maybe that's what my book will be about. Smiling eyes. <laughs> I think that's very true though. You can tell like some people like when I smile, my eyes, <laughs> right? <I'm deep. laughs> oh, that's funny. And glasses and masks right. don't work well together. <laughs> well, I might as well stick with my theme. <laughs> See? I know that I have one. Smiling eyes. <laughs> I think glasses and masks just kind of, yeah. Yeah, take the glasses I'm off. I'm afraid right? that when we all can take our masks off, we're all going to have already stopped smiling. <laughs> and then we won't know how to do it anymore. Well, as long and... as we don't look like Jack Nicholson in um, Batman, <laughs> where it's just stuck there, you know. <laughs> so have you guys tried those anti-fog eyeglass wipes? No. But, oh my gosh, they work so great. I'm I don't you. have those. Who doesn't have those? I don't have those, but well, I have some, I can send you some um, inter-county mail. You can try them, but I highly recommend them. They work great. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm taking really notes. When you have a Anti-fog. Anti-fog. All right. So who's words next? I heard that. I read that if you put a Kleenex under your mask, it stops it too, but I've not tried it. I'm just saying. No, no. These are pretty easy. You just take your glasses and they're done. So. And yes. Yes. So, oh, they do two things. They anti-foggy and clean. Yeah. <laughs> so school librarians who wear glasses, <laughs> anti-fog wipes. Yes. Okay. From Amazon. 14 bucks. Right. Okay, Why did cool. you get these? Very reasonable. Very reasonable. <laughs> okay. So Ingrid, do you want to go next with your word? No. No? <laughs> I don't. But thank you so much for asking. That was very thoughtful of you. But no, I'm good. Okay. All righty. So list. <laughs> here, I'll even, I'll even hold it up for you. <laughs> I you didn't can... do my homework. I didn't get a word. I get it. I'm working on it. Yeah, but I'm holding up my list. So you can't really, I, I, I can't see background. it okay. though, because you've got a background. I know that's why I held it up. <laughs> no, aren't you helpful? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Email it to her. There <laughs> Take you a go. picture and text it to her. I can do that. Um, so I mean, like I didn't do my homework either girl. So we're, we're in this, we're two peas in a pod with this one, but it's not for a lack of trying. So like one word is everywhere out there. You can't open anything up. Like I said, without seeing people talking about their one word. And here we are on January 13th already. So, you know, this has been a thing for a couple of weeks and mm -hmm. a word by January 13th might be a problem. It might be something that isn't going to happen. But I actually kind of did have a word, but I didn't really put it out there. Um, I mean, I did put it out there, but I didn't really say it was my one word. I just put it out there one day because I really liked it. I came across it while I was reading. Um, and it's a Swedish word and it's pronounced fika, and it, but it's spelled F-I-K-A. And it means a moment to slow down and appreciate the good things in life. Okay, so that's what I've been doing. And that's why I really liked Anita's moments in time for me um, on her list for create, um, because I found another thing that goes with your word, Anita. <laughs> Fika. Um, Fika, yeah. And so that's what I'm really, really trying to do. Uh, just because of all of, like I said, being so busy with COVID and trying to like make sure I service all of the people that we service each day, all of our stakeholders and everything like that. I felt like I was losing myself a little bit as a school librarian and um, a little bit of my personality, to be honest with you. And so I have to slow down and um, start learning to appreciate the good things in life again and, um, and be, uh, and find my suit my sense of humor like my sense of humor is always been there but I haven't used it a lot lately um and being around the people that have that sense of humor so um now, did you say it was a Dutch word 
uh, Swedish. Oh, it is a Swedish word. And I knew that word when you emailed it over to me. I'm like, oh, that's such a great word. Was because that- you're Swedish. I know I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See the influence that you have on me as a friend. <laughs> good thing so many ways it's a very good thing in so so many ways but I want to also say that before we started recording uh we were talking about different words and Anita shared the word joy and so joy is also another word that I have talked with my sister about a lot um since right before Christmas because it it's a Christmassy word kind of thing right and so just imagine me in the stores before Christmas time buying all of the Christmas things that have the word joy in it. I literally did that. And um, also I've continued, but not just Christmas things. Um, I got a new coffee cup the other day that had, um, that has the inscription on it. uh, Joy begins in the mornings. And because I've never been a morning person, Anita, um, I have become one. Um, I will never be a morning person. I've, I've, I've trans- transitioned over. I wake up every morning at the same time or I'm up all night anyway, but, um, but mornings are a time for peace for me. And um, if you're a coffee lover or a tea lover, you get your, your coffee or your tea or whatever, your orange juice, whatever you like in the morning. Um, and the house is quiet and it's still dark out a little bit. And the morning is starting. It's like a new beginning every day if you Mm -hmm. do it the right way. Um, And so joy, joy would be my other word. So I actually have two words. Um, I won't put those out there or anything like that, but I'll share them with you guys today. And uh, so that's what I'm going by is making sure that I slow down and, um, and I find joy in my life. So that's me. That's, that's my one words. <laughs> I tend to buy everything that has joy on it too, but for a totally different reason. You don't want to share? My great niece, her middle name is Joy. Oh, that's sweet. And so anytime I see Joy, I buy it and send it there to her. There you go. Mom, which is my niece. It, and, and is it spelled J-O-Y? Mm-hmm. Okay. Bella Joy. Well, you know, as a school librarian too, our you know, we've heard for how many weeks and months now too on how we provide social emotional support to our students and stuff. And so I, I try to be joyful for them when they're in the library. Um, and uh, just put on that smile like you talked about. Um, and bring back some of the things that are missing from our old normal. <laughs> They have, you know, because our new normal sometimes is just a little bit, you know, it can bring you down a little bit sometimes. Uh, So anyway, I try to incorporate that in the library as well. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but I don't have as many students come into the library. Um, Our library is still in the yellow. If um, just an FYI, we were told our libraries could be like a stoplight. It could be, you could be green yellow or red and I'm still in the yellow and so um it's been difficult it's been difficult um to going from checking out 45,000 books a year to um I don't know maybe 50 a day week (laughs) I don't have a whole lot of stats anymore um and so I don't get to share that either but uh but you have to, I have to find the joy. And so I'm doing that through books because that's my favorite. And um, finally got a bunch of new books from Follett. Um, I put orders in since the first week in November. And so they've all come in at the same time. Um, and so like Anita, you posted about, it was like Christmas the other day for Jeff. Was it Jeff you were saying? That it, yes. Okay, yeah. I wanted to be the first one to touch the books. <laughs> I went, that's typically my job. <laughs> but I let them I let them touch a couple of them I didn't open all the boxes in front of them yes but you know what that brought joy to so many kids the kids that were in the library my library science kids that were in there my para and me and so um I just I want to I, I point that out all the time because there's not a whole lot of investment in our libraries as far as budgets for continuous buying of books I mean each of us gets our budget and when it's gone it's gone but our kids still keep asking and suggesting and requesting 
new books that they want to read in the library. And so as a school librarian, I guess that would be my soapbox all the time is just getting up there and letting people of the world know that it's so important to fund our libraries. And, um, you know, I wish that I was a millionaire because if I was, that's where my investment would go, would to be to support libraries and public libraries and make sure that they have the budgets they need to, um, to operate efficiently, but also sufficiently for our kids so that our kids feel empowered through their school libraries. I know that they do at my library, but it's been different this year. Um, but I worry about our budgets next year, guys. I'm not gonna lie. I know, and I've got to spend some money still that's in my budget. And um, I'm, a, I'm gonna have a meeting next week with my library committee. Um, I'm, I'm not including parents this year or students. I'm just doing the teachers and most of them are language arts teachers anyway. But I try to have representation from every subject in every grade level. And um, I'm gonna, how often do you guys meet? Like twice a year. Okay. Not often. Because I haven't had a committee this year, but I invited three different people to do it. And so we're going to get started. And they're super excited. So I'm super excited. But so I'm going to present to them how I've spent the money already. And then I'm also going to present to them here's how much we got left. And it's a big chunk of change. What do we want to do? Mm -hmm. And I, I think we're, I'm going to lean in language arts teachers are too, um, more books and more eBooks and maybe a little bit of technology mm -hmm. or this year, they may say technology because we don't have much. So I, yeah, I typically, when they want us to buy technology, I typically buy iPads that can be checked out from the CLC. And those won't get taken from you. That's good. That's very good. <laughs> I think that now, now the district is saying that when students return broken devices that we've loaned them and they come back and they're broken, do not give them a, a new, uh, do not return that laptop to them to uh, give a Chromebook. We don't have those either at our school. No, Chromebooks you request from the district. Oh. The district specialist can get them and bring them. You, We've been doing Chromebooks for a while. A name. Like our secretary is in charge of requesting. So she will tell the, the head technology guy in our area, um, his name's Keith. She'll send him an email and say, Keith, we need like 10 Chromebooks and it's they're for these students. So they have to be basically assigned without being assigned yet to a student um, to use at home. So just out of curiosity, um, we have our school network and probably most school districts have school networks. And so I don't know if this will even apply to our listeners or anything, but um, in the past, Chromebooks, Chromebooks did not work on our school network. And we were, well, at least with my TTI, or not my TTIS, my computer tech, um, always discouraged me from getting them because they would not work on our school network. So how is that different this year? They don't. These are these are disposable just for them, devices, basically. Okay, so that and and they just use them at home on their own network. And if they come into school, now see the problem is when they come into school, if it's their own device or if, even if it's one of these devices and it's assigned to this student, then what they can do is they can join the um, the CCSD wireless, which is our local wireless for teachers and students with their own devices and not county devices. Mm -hmm. So they can join that network um, and log in. The problem is if it's a school owned device and it's it's going from student to student each period, that's where our ne network yes. has to, it doesn't want to release that student yes. Chromebook for another student to join. Okay, so that's yeah. the problem that our district has with Chromebooks. So I don't know I if guess I just, I, I guess what I want to ask then, because I hear a lot about, or I read a lot about school librarians that have Chromebooks or their, their schools use Chromebooks or one-to-one -one Chromebooks and whatever. How do they get around that? Because it's one-to-one. -one. So, so they, it's only one student using that one device. And then it's reassigned each year and, or that student has it for the entire time mm -hmm. of the school. 
Interesting. I believe it's reassigned each year. It's turned in at the end of the year and checked out again at the beginning of the next year. Okay. We have such, we have a lot of um, students that, you know, move, move. out. Yeah. And it so would be a very difficult thing for us as well <laughs> with the assigning and everything like that. So, but Ingrid, you were going to say something. What was it that you were going to say? I don't remember now. What was your word? Have you come up with your word yet? I haven't. I'm still thinking on it. Well, Ingrid will give that to us our next podcast. How about that? <laughs> Ingrid will do her homework. Yes. Her homework. All right. Um, um, does anybody want to share anything exciting that they're doing? I do. Space? Okay. Go ahead, Anita. Okay. So um, I got a message from Mr. Crawford. Um, I'm hoping he's not listening to this podcast. Um, I got a message from him like the day before teachers started back or maybe it was the Monday we started back and we never connected. And so he texted me and um, Monday night, I think that's what it was that Monday night. And he's like, I am so excited. I cannot wait to hear about your reading promotion for 2021. Cause I always start a new reading promotion. Oh, yes. Yes. We haven't got an update on that one. It goes through the spring. And so I even reached out to Ingrid and Lori and I was like, any ideas? Because I have no idea. Because when he said that, and that that came to me in a text message, I was like, "Well, I'd like to know what it is too." <laughs> I hadn't even thought of it. I brought my laptop home on that Friday. That was the last. We were virtual Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. On that Friday, I put my laptop down. I never picked it up again until the Monday we came back to school. I was very proud of myself. I was creating me time. Isn't that amazing? I know. So, well, I also wasn't working on a, a specialist degree. Um, and so I um, was like, oh, what am I gonna do? And then I called, or one of my teachers called me and she asked me some questions. And I said, now, after I had answered her questions and helped her out, I was like, now I'm gonna ask you one. I need a reading promotion, <laughs> do you have any ideas? And she's like, no, can't think of anything. 2020 is over, I said, she said, toilet paper from last year, something like that. And I went, oh, I have an idea. So I am going to share my screen with you right now. Uh, except for the, uh, it's disabled. So you're gonna have to allow me to share my screen. Oh, okay. Uh, I think if you make me a co-host or whatever. I, know, I had to open up my participants. I didn't have it open. I had us on full screen. Okay. And here we go. All right. So I am going to show you the image that I created. Our reading is on a roll. In <laughs> and so they, I'm asking them to set their goal and what you want to read for this semester. And then you're going to, if they read five books, they get a, a, a spin on the prize wheel. 10 books uh, spent on the prize wheel and they get to eat lunch in the CLC. I have different prizes also for uh, virtual students. So instead of eating lunch in the CLC on a different day, I'm gonna let them join in a Zoom meeting and eat lunch with me um, during their lunch time. Okay, I see something missing or I shouldn't say I see something. I can't see it if it's missing, right? Okay. <laughs> There's something missing. What? Coming up. About Jeff? <laughs> oh. Yeah, the, uh, the Where they prize. get to TP him? Is that oh, the special yeah. prize though? Yeah. So if 50 students read at least five books, and okay. I, set the, I set the number because I got tired of waiting on him to give me a number. So yesterday, after <laughs> if 50 kids read five books, because it was just an easy number to say, um, then um, the top students that have read more than 20 books get to TP Jeff's office. Oh, not him. Okay. <laughs> not him. His office. <laughs> so I think that would be a little odd, but <laughs> better than well, you know, just throw... <laughs> so Maybe maybe we'll let him be in there when they do it. I don't well, know. You know how they used to do that game in elementary school? I when I was an elementary mom, it, you know, you did the mummy. I remember. So you know. So yeah. So their prizes um go up. And then what we've done, I don't know, let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, are you seeing my screen still or is it still the toilet paper yellow thing? 
It's still the toilet still paper. The toilet thing. paper. Okay, so I may have to. So what are they? Do you have this posted yet? What are the kids saying? What's like? I have it. Is we it? started it this past Monday with uh, face-to-face students. I put it on my blog yesterday uh, mm-hmm. for virtual students, and Mr. Crawford gave me permission today, and I just haven't done it yet to put it on the school's website. That is awesome. I, I mean, so I'm super cute. cute. I was going to show you what we're doing is the students fill out this thing that I made that it looks like a toilet paper roll where they put their name, their homeroom teacher, and their, their reading goal for the semester. And then, and here it is. So let me see if I can stop sharing and then share this. So it looks like a toilet paper roll. Set your goal for how many books you want to read. Reach your goal and earn a special prize. So um, that's the thing again. But then this is what <laughs> so cute. Get. I love it. This is what they get the first book they check out this semester, and then they're allowed to decorate it and cut it out. And then when they come back and they get other books, then they just get a square of toilet paper. <laughs> and then we're posting them in the CLC and we're taping them together so that um, we wanna see who has the longest roll of toilet paper at the end of the semester. That's awesome, I love it. So it is totally middle school. I, <laughs> when, when I announced it to the staff meeting last Wednesday, they went crazy. They thought it was the coolest thing. And I'm like, I think our kids are gonna like it now. Yeah, no, I think that that's awesome. I can't wait. I can't wait to hear the stories about it. <laughs> so, so that's my cool thing that we're doing right now. And then we just got a poster printer and uh, we, we've had one from the dark ages for a long time uh, that only did one color. <laughs> and I know. We found our PTSA, thank you. Thank you, Autry PSA, PTSA for buying us a real color printer. And so I sent out something yesterday to teachers offering to do um to make posters for them to either print them out or if they want me to design them all they have to do is tell me what they want and i will try to have the 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 designs done by thursday so they can approve them but i'm only printing posters on friday because we're not allowing teachers to use it because we don't want um some wastefulness and some um breakage since it's brand new yeah so i print on fridays yes so Paul bought us a brand new one. Gal, it's been three years ago now. And um, it was the best thing. I have to say, it's the best thing for teachers, for their visuals, um, but for their classroom. But it's like, it's been the best thing for the library. Like I, I, like, I don't think there's a space on my walls anywhere that doesn't have something up there um, for the students. But um, I have the teachers design their own stuff and then they have to send it to me in PDF. Like I don't, I don't print it until it's final because. Well, I, I found out on this one, you have to have the sizes in before you go to print it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to have to put everything into Canva anyway to change the size and everything. Um, And so, unless there's something I don't know, and, and that could be it too. (laughs) <laughs> but um, I also offered, because I have the free, if you don't have Canva, yeah. as soon as this is over, you need to go and apply for their educator Canva yes. account. It is free. Mm-hmm. And then and you have so many student accounts underneath you. And so what I'm doing is I'm offering teachers a student account if they would like to learn how to use Canva. And then if they want to apply for a free one, um, they can after that. But yeah, it is awesome. And the student accounts too are great if you, um, so for my library science students mm-hmm. the last semester, I had, I gave them student accounts so that they could do their work in there and give them, I, so they know, I just taught them all about Canva and everything and they had their own account too. But then also they can design things as well um, to help me with um, program library programming and things like that too. So it's very awesome. It's my favorite thing ever. Yeah, I, I use Canva for website. Because right? why? Because why? Because Lori told me about it two years ago. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. Because of Anita's word. We love to <laughs> create. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, Lori told me about this a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. And so I paid the $120 or whatever it was for the big membership. Mm-hmm. And then last I did the year, first time too. 
because I wasn't sure if I was going to use it or not. So I didn't want to even spend school money. I spent it out of pocket. Mm-hmm. And then um, last year I was about to renew and I was like a day or so from my renewal. And, and then, the, yes. <laughs> told me, was it you, Lori? Or somebody said something yeah, about- Yeah, it's free now. The yeah. free educator version. And I'm like, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's what I do. Well, on that note, I also love our Griffin PTSA. Uh, because they just purchased us a new VeraQuest die cut machine. The one we had before that was many, many, many years old (laughs) and it kept breaking down and breaking down and I had to keep trying to fix it and changing the blades and all this and that and whatever. Uh, I bought a couple of new parts for it. Um, Well, I didn't, but Paul did. And then, um, but we don't actually, in our district, we don't actually have a person that services that machine. And so um, it's really difficult. We have to call an outside person to come in. It's very expensive. It's like $100 an hour. Um, And so anyway, it was broke down and I was like, this is, I can't get any more out of this machine. I've been doing it for six years. Um, And so we got a new one. We just put it in yesterday and now our Bear Crest Vera Quest rep is coming on Friday to install it um, with my computer tech and put the new software in. I guess there's new software or something, um, but it looks super pretty right now. Um, but I'm very excited about that. Teachers have, have been having to do the. Sh- 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 That's all we have because we're not a Title One school. We don't have all that money. PTSA we don't have one either is awesome. <laughs> we have the Ellison machine and we have Cricut. Yeah. And the other thing too is a Canva, you can export it as a, whatever it is that the Cricut takes, you can mm-hmm. export it as that and, the and S- your Cricut. SBC, S- SB, SVG? Yeah. S- SVG file or whatever, yeah. Mm-hmm. So then you can you can use it in your Cricut um, and not have to pay for all those fonts and all those other designs. How many, how many bulletin boards you, do you guys have? Okay, so I, as everybody knows, and if you don't, I have a transition hall that goes through my library. So I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, I have six bulletin boards in that one transition hall that I use for the library to promote things and stuff like that. So I have an electric tronic uh, die cut is a lifesaver. Um, Cause we've had, I mean, my para has been having to do the, I listen to so it takes a little bit of a minute um when you do it that way but um anyway super excited so yes we both have very fine ptsa um groups i join every year if you don't join your ptsa i'm just gonna put a plug out there join your ptsa and you know what's sad is they only get like ours is a five dollar membership and they only get like a dollar of that to keep everything else goes to the ptsa organization yes plus they've they've um not been able to do a lot of their fundraisers that they typically do because of covid and stuff so um yeah um the other thing i'm excited about and this has to and this is this stems from what we've been doing with our podcast even though we haven't done a lot of podcasts um but we're on a roll we're on a a roll anita trying (laughs) Uh, so I told my pair, I'm like, you know what? I mean, like if you have the skill, you need to use it. Right. So I'm like, I'm a podcaster. Why am I not doing more podcasting? And so I told her, I said, I know there's several out there that people can listen to. Um, and so we're going, we started and I've got the board done and everything. Um, so her and I are going to start podcasting about the books that we're reading, um, and posting those up and sharing them with teachers so that they can put them in CTLS and use them as, um, you know, teasers or whatever. Um, and, uh, get kids. That's an excellent them. idea. And so. That is a good idea. I've stepped uh, back from doing my one chapter reads for a while, and I, I may need to pick it up and do it at least once a week. It's so hard because like, there's some things where you know that you have participation and you can track participation and get that data. And then there's other things that are very difficult to determine if people are participating. <laughs> so um, that's my that's my thing. Um, so library media specialists out there right now, what are what are you doing to attract teachers and students or your stakeholders to participate in your library programs and activities and stuff like that that I would like to know that myself 
Um, I would love to see those in our YouTube video stream um, in our comments. Tell us what you're doing to attract uh, clients and students, teachers into your space, or can you not have people come in yet? I, I know Lori said that her, her people coming in has been really low. Mm -hmm. um, mine's been, mine is lower than what it normally is on a non COVID year. Uh, but I still have, like, I think yesterday we had probably about 50 kids come through. Well, then um, we have testing coming up now. <laughs> so I'm, my space is not used for testing. That's yeah, me there. And my kids, um, it's not like a rotation per se, but I have teachers that have signed up to send children in small groups on certain days, which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, but with contact tracing, it was just getting too difficult to do it any other way. Um, and then they're also coming in, I've also set it up so that they're coming in for a, um, a catch up day. And there's different stations. And so I'm able to teach digital lessons. Um, at different stations and do check out and do a variety of other things with them on that catch up day along with their teacher who is um, doing her own little breakout sessions as well. So I'm getting um, more traffic, not to interrupt, but it's not traffic I'm accustomed to, right? Like it, it's that reimagining your space and being able to kind of mm -hmm. the box and appreciate that some of the things that you wouldn't necessarily choose in the past are a good choice now. So, I mean, I, I have, again, I have traffic. I just don't have traffic that I'm used to. It's just different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to see if I can try and share mine. Um, Ingrid, do you have anything like a visual of anything or to, to share that? Because I think that, that that's awesome. That's like a great idea for, um, for me to try as well, because what I I used to have a lot of stations in the library, but they were maker sta uh, space stations, and I'm not allowed mm -hmm. to use those right now. Um, and so that's been really hard too, because that also brought a lot of students into the library as well. And I have not mm -hmm. do that. So um, I really don't. I just did a blurb for our school newsletter, um, letting parents know that over the next few months. Um, scholars will be coming in to do digital citizenship or digital lessons with um, me and the LLC and um, <clears throat> provided them the dates and the lesson that was coming up next week and then included a family activity for them to do at home with their kids that support the lesson that they're getting in the library that week. So yeah, awesome. just a, a different way of approaching what I do that I haven't done before. So we'll see. I think that's, I think it's incredible. I mean, that's what we're doing, right? We're, we're, yeah. you know, finding ways. <laughs> you have to find like, ways. I like the fact that you have, um, like through CTLS, which is our platform uh, for mm -hmm. digital learning in Cobb County. Um, I like that you have CTLS drop-in sessions and mm -hmm. stuff like that, where you can talk to the kids about books. Mm -hmm. um, it is, yeah, and I got to tell you, it's been really successful. I started doing my enrichment book club um, when we started doing enrichment at school, and it was great, but it was really nice when the kids came in and already knew me, because even when they weren't able to come to the library, I still got probably not a ton of kids, but I got, you know, seven to ten kids from each class that would come in within like a 40 minute, 30, 40 minute time frame to say hi or ask about a book or talk to me about their book or just catch up or make that connection. And I found it was just really helpful when we transitioned and I started moving back into what I consider my more traditional role in regards to teaching and, um, and so supporting you, literacy. Did you create your own um, tile in CTLS and what did you call it? So um, actually, it's called Library Hours. Okay. Or Library. Here, hang on. I can pull it up and tell you. I want to say it's Library Hours. Um, Anita, you have to give me sharing rights back. Oh, <laughs> but and it's actually just um, it says Learning Commons, and then it has a teacher, and then it um, has a posting of the Library Hours or when they could drop in. And every one of my ELA teachers created another classroom with me as a co-teacher. Um, so I post different things in there for kids about the reading promotion that we're doing or some of the different activities. So teachers let you go into their classrooms and, and, and post things for, for um, them? No, so I do this in my library. Oh, okay, okay. Created. 
Okay. But I have, I am going, I'm actually going in next week um, to some of my ELA classes. They're doing a novel study and, um, and the kids asked if I would come in and be a guest speaker. So I'm not actually a speaker, a guest reader, excuse me. So I'm going in to read a chapter of their book to them um, one day next week. So I'm kind of excited about that too. No, that's super exciting. I, that's, mm -hmm. I love it. So when you are in CTLS, do you just go live and then you, and then mm -hmm. you have it open live and then the kids come in through that way? Yeah, they get notification that it's open. So if they want to come, they can. And then so they do you have every student in your school and your roster for them to be able to do that? So I have the same roster for my class as my ELA teacher did. So okay. everybody in the building has a library class with me. Okay. I have different times that they can come in. And sometimes okay. I pull them up, but most of the time um, I can only do that when Miss Tribu, my para, when Royce is with me, so she can take a group yeah. and I can take a group. But, okay. and then I got email this year, which has been revolutionary for me. So I'm able to correspond, like for example, my enrichment kids um, aren't supposed to meet until January 20th, but um, over break, I'm like in the grocery store, minding my own business, masked up, ta da da. And uh, <clears throat> somebody's calling me Teams. I'm like, what's going on? And I pull it up. And I had kids that had opened the meeting in Teams and were waiting to be admitted. I'm like, y'all were on break. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> love you so much. Love we're not doing this today. <laughs> They're so funny. So oh. that's what I was doing today. It was late to our session because I offered the sessions to my kids. They don't have to come. It's mandatory when the school climbs back on board with it, right? But um, they just wanted to come so much. I'm like, all right, well, we'll do it. And I had four that came today. So it wasn't a high number, but. No, but see, see. Four more than I had. Yes. <laughs> everything is not a competition. And so like yeah. everything. Everybody's school is different. Everybody has a different student population, a different population of teachers teaching different things. And so all of our schools are not going to be the same or look the same. Yeah. And I just want to put a bunch of <clears throat> love and um, joy out there to all school librarians because what you're doing is enough, okay? And if you yes. see somebody else doing something in their library, it doesn't mean that they're doing something better than you. It means they're doing what's needed for their students, okay? Mm -hmm. So always think about your library program and create the things. Anita, create the things. <laughs> Anita's word, I should say. Create the things that are best for your students. And um, I just I just want to put that out there because there's so many there's so much pressure on educators right now, and especially school librarians because we are trying to recreate our roles a little bit in all that we do and stuff like that. So I just want to put that out there, and I think that's fabulous, um, Ingrid, what you're doing. And I'm going to call you um, because I know how to set up the room in CTLS, but I've got to figure out how. And I might have to work with my AP on this to get the students I need in there so that I can do something live with them as well. And it's and share all of the things too that we do in the library with, them. I like that idea. Um, so there's like an announcement board so you can put in. Yes, yes. Happening. Um, so I did like, I, I've paced. Well, they've changed the dashboard. We got to look at it because I want to see yeah. what it's going to look like too for the kids. Uh, it um, doesn't come through till Friday. Yes, yes. yes. But like I posted some of the breakout EDUs that I did. Mm -hmm. um, and then their teachers would go in and assign it to them. So you have to go into Miss Hansen's library class and complete this breakout EDU. Because um, I have another idea for stuff. this, but I want to run it across with you two before and see what you guys think. Because like you're making these ideas all sprout out here. <laughs> oh, good. Um, I mean, so I, I think it's been really helpful. I mean, I, I'm a, a huge proponent. If you don't have a library class in CTLS, I... I, it's been super helpful for me. Yes. And I need to clarify that I did not have any students show up today because I don't have a library science class. So it wasn't that my students blew me off. It's because I have not created one. I'll tell you what, having my library science students and teaching them in CTLS um, this past semester was the most amazing thing because not only did I learn CTLS a lot better than I would have just from the training sessions that we received, but it made me feel empowered with teaching, right? I, I mm -hmm. felt like I was teaching and I was um, impacting kids. 
And so that mm -hmm. was my connection um, to my students and everything. Um, and so I'm going to miss it this semester. I don't do it second semester because of testing, but um, uh, I'm going, I, I'm going to miss that a lot, a lot, a lot. So if I do something similar to what you're doing in grid, um, that if it will work for my kids and I'm going to run it by you, then I think that's the route I'm going to try and take next. So thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Um, I was just <clears throat> share really quick um, when we were talking about the podcasting and we were talking about Canva because I created it in Canva and I just have my Canva screen up here. So, and this is up on the board. Um, and so listen to lit is what it's called. <laughs> um, and so it'll be me and my para as the host, but we'll be bringing kids in as well um, that have read the book with, or the books with us. Um, and so that they can put their input in there as well. And so um, very big on student voice and students being the proponents of their school library. So um, yeah, and so I um, am very excited and underneath it, I don't know if I, I'm embarrassed to go back to the home because you guys are going to see all of the things I create every day, but um, I'm just happy to see somebody with as many tabs as me. Just saying. Oh, I know. Right. <laughs> every day, all day long. I live in my tabs. So Lori, how are they listening to this podcast? Are they downloading the anchor app? Like what are, how are they listening to this? Well, they, ha they haven't started listening yet because this is just something we um, are getting started to do or starting to do. Uh, I love this idea. And so, and we're not doing the same books. So when we get, when we come in, I will have read a book and she will have read a book and we're going to talk about two books and then we'll have the kids in there talking with us as well. So uh, you're doing a QR code then? Yes. So these little books mm -hmm. up on the, on the board underneath the poster I just showed. And then on the left side, we're going to put the book cover and on the right side, when, after each of the uh, podcasts, I'll put the QR code there. Um, and then teachers can scan and whatever. But then I will also share it with the teachers if they want to put it in their CTLS resources or something or share it with the kids or whatever it is. They great idea. So, yeah, that is a great idea. But um, yeah, so just something like I, like you, like you, Ingrid, like you, Anita, like every other school librarian out there, we are so just um, reinventing sometimes because um, you can't do it like we did before, right? Right. <laughs> um, and so I don't know the quote, but I've heard the quote and I've heard my college instructors talk about it in my pro uh, in my um, school programs or college programs. You never want to be the person that says that's the way we've always done it. So um, mm -hmm. I it's like what that. We do right? I it's do what too. we do. It's what school librarians do. And um, every day we talk about our value to our schools and our students. And so um, that's my contribution in all of today's podcast. To be honest with you, um, is the value each one of us are so unique in what we bring to our schools. So does anybody have anything else I want to share or otherwise I think we've held our audience quite a while today. <laughs> I know and so, we, we went on we had said 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 I, I think know. <laughs> so how long has it been? Uh closer to an hour I'm guessing cuz the recording Ooh, wow. is how long. Yeah, I it doesn't tell me the time. Luckily we have some very good and reliable and fans that love to just let it let us talk. Right. And let us ramble. Yeah. And, and hopefully some of our ramblings and conversations have led to them thinking of things that they can do. Because I know every time I get with y'all, I think of new things that I can do because of your the conversations that we have. So hopefully this is bubbling over into other library media specialists in Georgia, in Cobb County, around the world that are saying, hey, that's a good idea. And yeah, you can take it and tweak it and use it. Make your it own. your own. Yes, absolutely. I t again, we all know I haven't had an original idea in 20 years. I just listen quietly and absorb and tweak and, and give credit to those that did make it, but steal it all the same. <laughs> That's so important, guys. Give credit to whoever you, who, whoever work that you are inspired by. 
Um, so, so important. I mean, that's one of our roles as a school librarian is just to be an automatic thing anyway. Um, but yeah, I, it, and the whole idea of giving credit is to give credit to the person, but also because that person, then you're also given them the opportunity to shine and also be um, a resource to somebody else if they wanted to contact them to get more information about a program that they're doing in their library. Um, and I say that because before we started this podcast, and Anita, we haven't done this yet, um, we had a water bottle to give away. And oh, uh, yeah, the water bottle. So one of our uh, participants um, is a new name. And we were like, who's this person? Who's this person? How are we going to find out who this person is? And trust me, as school librarians, we find things. So we would have figured it out. And being a Twitter person that I am, I would have done all kinds of searches and stuff. Um, but anyway, going back to giving credit to somebody, um, the more people that are in our PLN, the better. And to know who to go to for information mm -hmm. and resources is really what it's all about for us. So can we get the water bottle away now? You. Yes, it's all about okay. you, Anita. So the water bottle is going to, drum roll please. <laughs> Ashley Sherman, whose word Yay. for this year is focus. And she says, focus is my goal word, but naps seems more likely for 2021. Smiling Yay. face, love you lady. <laughs> we love you too, Ashley. But I also, the new name that we have out there, um, she posted a week ago, um, asking if the cu a cup has been spoken for yet. Um, and it was to the first person that had replied. So um, her, she did reply on there that her word is grace, to give it and allow it myself some. And I love that. So I love that. Sherry Burnett, um, you need to get in touch with me. You can email me. Um, um, you can find my email address for the school at Autry's website. Um, or, or you, you can email overdue LMS at gmail.com. Yes, overdue, overdue, mm -hmm. uh, say it again. Overdue LMS at gmail.com. Because um, I don't have another one of those tumblers to give away, but- We have swag do, left from overdue. We I do have, do. I do have a decal um, that's just like it that you can put on your own water bottle or your own Yeti or whatever you want to put it on. So I do have, um, you can even put it on the back of your car if you wanted to. Um, <laughs> so I only say that because my son's now asking me, mom, can you make me some decals for the back of my car? Um, but you can, you can put it on whatever you'd like. Um, and I will mail that to you. So um, thank you for participating. Thank you for participating. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Being a listener. We do appreciate you. Check out our YouTube page because some of you are listening on podcast, which is fine too, but um, you get to see our expressions and our <laughs> background. And, um, that could be scary, else. just a warning. It's true. <laughs> um, I did, just saying not to guilt anyone into watching on YouTube, I did go upstairs and put on makeup just for you guys. <laughs> so, just saying. I put some lipstick on. I'm sorry, guys. I just like this whole COVID no makeup thing. I'm like, I blue dry my hair. I gave myself a blowout and I, um, <laughs> wow. I'm I was going to ask you if you used a straightener today. It does. It looks like I have, a straightener. I have a thick curling iron that works kind of like a straightener. I do have a straightener, but I prefer that thick curling iron because then at the end, it'll give it a little curl. Awesome. But, um, and, and most days I'll just curl my hair back. So, but today I was in the middle. It looks cute. It does look cute. cute. I made my hairpin by myself. So, you know, create. Yeah, create. Yes, create. I made, my, I made my hairpin. I make hairpins and sell them um, along with some at her At her fair when we can. At my craft fair that we couldn't have this year. I know, I know. So, so. But, but we've got to let y'all go because we've kept y'all long enough. And thank you for those that are faithful that have listened all the way to the end. We really do love you and appreciate you. And thank you for being patient for us for not putting out podcasts. Yes. A lot during this, we were very overwhelmed with all the stuff going on um, with ourselves and with our schools and having to support teachers and having to support administration and and things we do normally, but we had to do and find a, a way to do mm -hmm. it differently. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we want to say thank you for being patient with us for not podcasting for a while. We are back and we're going to try and get on more regularly and have and have oh so much fun. Because we really do. Lots of fun. <laughs> this, and we hope you do too. These conversations bring me joy. 
Yeah. Yes. There, there you yes. go. Finally, you used one of my words. Create <laughs> joy. You don't know yet. <laughs> I'm working on it. Stop. Okay. It. I no, but I'm just saying it needs to go with that. Create joy. Right. Yes, but but it, Ingrid is Swedish, and we have yeah. we have Fika. So <laughs> I would use that, but you already used it. I can't steal your word. Create you can, you can totally steal my word, but you don't have to. But you totally are welcome. No, I totally would. I'm all about stealing your word. <laughs> the original ideas. We just talked about this. <laughs> right. Just cite her as your source. Just saying. <laughs> so this is my word from Lori. <laughs> <laughs> Who's not Swedish? <laughs> well, I could be, but I don't know. But I don't, I would say no because I have dark hair. But I am <laughs> and have blue eyes. So you it's know, true. You never know. I think we should take a trip there, a girls' trip there one day before oh, it's beautiful. It is over. <laughs> so I would maybe we could podcast from there. There you go. I took my <laughs> oldest daughter, but we haven't brought my youngest daughter, so I'm super sad. <laughs> I thought you were going to say we haven't brought my youngest daughter back yet. <laughs> we just left her there. It's fine. She's just going to grow up there now. It'll be good. We are getting slap happy now. Yeah. All right. So we're going to sign <laughs> off now that everybody is uh, diving into dig uh, giggles. So um, thank you for supporting <laughs> us. And um, we would love to hear your ideas on what are you doing to bring uh, patrons and teachers um, into your space or to mm -hmm. support them during this time. So if you could put that in our YouTube comments, we would appreciate it. All right. And I'm sure we can find a prize. I'm positive. I'm positive. We will find a prize for sure. We'll figure something out. <laughs> Even okay, if it's just a deep felony, they can print another one. <laughs> All right. Okay. Y'all have everyone. a great, great. Bye. Bye. Bye now. <laughs>